uh, welcome everyone. Uh, this is topic now will be Avalon and IIIF. Um, my name is Chris Colvard from Indian University. Um, my colleagues um, who helped out with this presentation are Brian Keith, um, Maria Whitaker, and Adam Arling. And I guess if you came to my um, came to the Tuesday workshop on IIIF, this is going to be mostly that same stuff with a little bit um, of things that were mentioned within um, the Avalon update during uh, the plenary session. So first is the question, what is IIIF? Who here is familiar with IIIF? Just to raise a hand to see. Okay, that's pretty much everyone. Um, IIIF, it stands for the International Image Interoperability Framework. And as this definition shows here, it highlights it's a community, so similar to Sam Barrett, community develops shared APIs, implements them in software, and exposes interoperable content. So again, each of those pieces are important. Community, shared API, software, content. Um, so IIIF kind of grew up just starting off with an image API. Kind of how do we take an image and have a standard, this kind of URL scheme, to make some transformations on it. And the kind of driving use case for some of this was um, to be able let's see if I can fill this up here. Um, to be able to do uh, kind of richer things like deep zoom, uh, which here is a triple F client called Mirador. And it's loading um, these two images and these two different panels from different collections. So these are not stored the same place. In fact, the project, you know, neither of these are, um, neither of these images are really here in a digital repository that the software is connected to. It's a C couple. It has that API. So it allows it to, you, to be able to make requests to a given um, repository and make segments, zoom in. And this um, one uh, kind of driving use case uh, for this is uh, with manuscripts and taking manuscripts, um, like illuminated manuscripts that had like the illuminated, like, you know, fancy letter that's been cut out and shipped off into some one collection and the rest of the manuscript page is off to another collection. You can reunite them in an easy, common way because you have this API to work from. So that's great. You can connect images, you can transform images, but then really you want to provide a rich uh, interface that provides metadata, descriptive, um, and uh, structural, and kind of wrap it all up and do nice stuff. So uh, Mirador that we saw has some of that. Um, and maybe I'll just show that real fast. In Mirador here, each one of these panels has the ability to pop out and see some descriptive metadata. And you also have the ability to um, add some annotations if you want to you know, highlight something on the page. And um, this can all get wrapped up within a presentation um, manifest. And that's kind of what drives the presentation API. So it's the definition of a manifest document that kind of wraps up all of these things that can then be fed into a um, into a client, into generally a JavaScript client that uh, can drive this rich user interface. So here is um, mentioning the presentation API is really around a JSON manifest and descriptive information and how it. Um, the concept that it introduces is a shared canvas, so having a kind of canvas that content gets painted onto. And generally that's images, or um, as we are seeing, um, but it could, uh, it could be multiple images. It can be the, uh, the rejoining of the manuscript into kind of one view. Um, here is kind of like an SD diagram um, where there's a collection, has manifests, has canvases, um, has annotations, and has structural metadata. And this is the diagram for um, the presentation 3R uh, API, which I'll mention. 
here's another quick example of what that looks like. Um, where this is universal viewer, so the different triple IF uh, viewer. And here we have a score with you know, many, many pages. And here's some navigational, structural navigational um, tree over here to be able to dig in and jump right to the pages that you want. The content is being delivered to the image API, and um, we've got that descriptive metadata here on the side. There are some other APIs that have kind of grown up on the IIIF community um, around searching, kind of a full text search within a manifest, within a, an item, as well as uh, authentication to support you know, non-public uh, content. And so why I go through all of this, and again, maybe sort of mentioned some here, is that having that API, having that manifest as the um, you know, the, the shared contract between things allows the repository to decouple from the interface, from what's actually driving that rich that experience. So any server, many servers can supply this manifest, and then many different clients can take and consume it. It's easy to switch out your client if you want to switch from Mirador to Universal Viewer or to something custom. You've got that ability, you've got that freedom, because um, you're repository is just serving this manifest. And as I had mentioned, having this um, API allows for content to be shared from multiple repositories and kind of brought together um, within one, um, with one user uh, experience. So I work on Avalon, which does AV stuff. So where does this fit? Where does AV fit in? Seeing as I was just talking about images. Um, there was an effort started um, about two, maybe two, three years ago um, at this point to try to extend all of that uh, work that's been done on images and bring uh, AV into it. And uh, there's been um, kind of AV interest group meetings that have happened um, pretty regularly now, they're happening monthly. But the main kind of work out of, uh, out of that was to inform a new version of the presentation, the API spec. Um, it's version 3.0, which is currently in kind of alpha beta state, but is fairly stable at this point. And um, the, the final kind of, um, the final version coming uh, hopefully not too long from now. But the main thing is to take that shared canvas and you add a time dimension. You now say, over a course of time, I can paint different things onto a canvas. Um, there's also a kind of a technical switch within the manifest to using W3C web annotations instead of open annotations. So what does this look like? Here is some kind of examples that um, were made as part of the uh, AAAF AV group. And so if you can kind of see here, we've got a slider, um, a scrubber, and there's these little bars underneath, and those are representing when things are going to appear on this canvas. So if I click play, this is kind of an example of what can be done. Is that there's an image painted the whole time, that's this main one, but now we see another image gets painted, some text, um, there's another image, and then we've got a video appearing and painting, um, and those things will come and go, and it's all specified within this manifest of saying, you know, paint this thing onto the canvas for this period of time at this kind of x, y coordinate. This is a fairly complex case, uh, where often it's going to be um, something, let's see, like a example that we have of some audio and it's uh, one um, piece here that has you know, three different sound files, and I want to stitch them together, sort of, because they all represent um, pieces of the same thing. So, uh, brief background on Avalon. We heard about it during the plenary, but uh, Avalon Media System is uh, open source software that we 
developed uh, between Indiana University and Northwestern predominantly. And um, it's really a Samvera uh, solution bundle focused on audio and video. And uh, we presented last year on our plan within Avalon 7 to rebase on top of Hyrax to kind of break apart our more monolithic code base into components that could be used kind of within or um, outside of Avalon, the solution bundle, to try to uh, build up a community around AV content um, within uh, kind of Hyrax and, and some very more generally. So now kind of what, what have we done besides helping on um, that spec team? Uh, what have we done so far in Avalon 7 within a Hyrax context? And what we've done is we've uh, added those manifest endpoints. Hyrax with and Hyrax 2.1 came with uh, a you know, REST endpoint to deliver that uh, manifest, that uh, presentation manifest, but for presentation 2.0 and for images. And uh, within yeah, again, Hyrax 2.1, uh, with that manifest endpoint also came a uh, universal viewer for as the client to render and provide the user interface. So the work we've done so far in Avalon 7 is to um, update that endpoint uh, through a, a, a Hyrax plugin to provide a presentation 3 manifest. And we've also um, made it so with, within the same plugin so you can configure which triplet uh, viewer you're going to use within um, Hyrax, and we have our uh, prototype player, which I'll show later. Future work, which we haven't done yet, but which will be part of Avalon 7, is uh, playlists, and we'll hopefully be implementing that, uh, we should be, in uh, as a presentation uh, manifest. So the ability to take clips from, um, from different items within the collection and uh, bring them together within a playlist. So the workshop that um, gave on Tuesday has a repository here. You can check it out later and run through the instructions. I um, went back through and did that recently. And um, here is a vanilla Hyrax. This is not um, Avalon 7 solution bundle, but we're, it's in development. Um, this is just kind of a vanilla um, Hyrax 2.3.3, such as the latest Hyrax. And You'll notice, hopefully first, is that this player is not the native HTML5 player that Hyrax would normally um, show. It's not the browser um, player. It's a media element player that we bring in through a React component. This is kind of the Avalon um, prototype IIIF player. And it's taking, let's see if I can show this here. So we can see here in the code, instead of bringing in a universal viewer, it has this div, which is um, where the React component is loading. And you can see that manifest URL, um, where it's pulling the triplet manifest from. And it's eventually within here rendering a media element player. So we can take a look at that manifest. And here's our JSON. Uh, it, without our, so this is using the Hyrax Triple FAV plugin that we just um, cut the 0.1 uh, of um, right before Connect here. And that provides this uh, presentation 3 of manifest. Without this, what you get on a video item, if you go into Hyrax, you, you've ingested an audio or video item, and the manifest you get back is a presentation 2 of manifest, which, and uh, all it has would be this metadata. It would have no ability to, to do anything with the content. You wouldn't get the content. But looking through the manifest, you see that we have um, metadata fields. This is just a generic work here. So title, creator, keyword, and um, rate statement. Those all come through into the manifest. And then we have this item section which at the top here is our canvas. 
Uh, within a canvas, there's annotations that are painted onto it. And in this case, we have the we have two choices, um, which is the WebM and the MD4 derivatives that Hyrax uh, uh, generates out of the box. You see there's some technical metadata on this as well. Down here, there's the structure section. And right now, uh, Hyrax you know, doesn't really have a way to say what's the structure um, within this file. How do I cut this up into, say, chapters? Or um, if it were an opera, into acts, scenes, arias? You know, how to subdivide this content into um, uh, navigable uh, chunks? So it just is kind of an empty thing here. But there's a hook within um, uh, the, the work in the file set presenters to be able to supply that if you, if you have that information. And Avalon 7 um, will continue to support the structural metadata that was in Avalon 6, where we had some kind of custom XML. Um, within Avalon Bundle, we're crosswalking that into this manifest. Okay. And uh, the promise of interoperability, if you take one of these manifests that I was just showing and um, take it off into a IIIF viewer, in this case Universal Viewer, and on its example page, you should be able to just use it there if it's you know, public and not uh, uh, behind some authorization. So your content can then be taken and used in different contexts and different uh, tools outside of your just your repository. Um, future work, or current and future work, um, that's kind of around IIIF, that's not just that uh, manifest and player, is the structural metadata editor. This is something we're building for Avalon 6 right now, but also for Avalon 7. And just a uh, user interface to be able to build up this hierarchy, this kind of structure within, um, within a file. And this is just in um, development. This is a screenshot of kind of what's been done so far. We're also building this as React component, or a set of React components. And, um, and in the end, uh, this will not only work within Avalon, but hopefully we can also extend it to just uh, spit out that uh, structural metadata for any IIIF manifest. Other work that's been going on is, that was mentioned um, in the Avalon plenary is uh, an audio timeliner, we call it audio timeliner, and it's a way to build kind of analysis diagrams of audio. Um, as uh, John Dunn mentioned, this is being done uh, you know, separate from Avalon, separate from really anything within the embarrassed stack. It's really just working with really good some new work in Tripwire manifests. So these you know, kind of rich tools that we can um, use whenever we're kind of, uh, signing on to that contract of, of the IIIF manifest of the presentation that we have. So this is um, really, really recent work, and it's still getting, um, you know, still getting worked on, and we'll, we'll let you know when there's more details on that. Other kind of future work possibilities um, is oral histories, where we have synced transcripts. It's another thing you can do with that structural metadata um, that ranges within a presentation manifest. It is um, not just have like a web VTT caption style, um, but really have the strong links and have it all be uh, embedded within that manifest and packaged with that. Similarly, synchronizing uh, musical scores and recordings. That's something we had in the old variations System that came before Avalon at IU. Um, the ability to synchronize your uh, page content and your audio content um, should be possible with that shared canvas. And then um, not only playlists built with content from their repository, um, what I mentioned that Avalon 7 will have, also starting to incorporate external content that also matches, also provides um, IIIF manifests. And that's all that I have, um, kind of where we've 
uh, where we, what we've done with AAA, um, PlayStation 3.0, um, kind of future work that we're looking at doing. Um, if you have, if you're interested in working on this stuff, um, please talk with us. Uh, we'd love to have others join us in this work. It's not just you know building towards Avalon 7, but also um, hopefully in a very shareable way um, within Hyrax or within other uh, same variant components. And I guess we have some time for questions. Um, Ryan's got the mic. If anyone has some, happy to ask. Oh, yeah, I'm just wondering about the back end. Does Avalon have any sort of preferred AAAM server or ones that work with better or anything like that? Great. So that's a good question of AAAF servers. Um, so Avalon provides, uh, or within the higher context, we have a plugin that will generate that manifest from your uh, work in file set presenters. But um, the work with, with AV content has decided to not have a, um, a you know, bitstream API, some analogous to the image API. So the image API needs a server a lot of times to, to back up to be able to respond to those requests and um, cut the crop and, and color interest and you know, all those things. But with AV content, it was decided to not attempt to do that sort of a thing um, at the beginning. That might be an API that will come later, like a video or audio API. Um, but that's not, um, the effort within the AV group was to focus on the manifests and the presentations, uh, presentation manifests to start with. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little more about the the players that you're using. So it looks like in the context of Hyrax, you're using media element, um, and is that um, they look like a bit more of like a simplistic, like traditional AV implementation. So is that just you're extracting those WebM or MP4 URLs and then plugging those into the player? Is that yeah? At this point, um, at this point, that's basically what we have. We have a. Um, Adam can maybe talk more, uh, but we've been building a uh, kind of simple player. We started thinking about you know uh, how to get feature parity with the player that's in Avalon 6, which has a bit more tools around it. Um, but really kind of has another reference implementation to kind of prove out the spec. Uh, Universal Viewer 3.0 has support for doing this AV content. And, um, I think we're still a little unsure if we're going to be going, continuing to build our custom player that matches our content, or a more generic player, like Universal Viewer, that um, it would, would be the same between uh, image content or TV content. Um, but I guess I, I should note that within the Hyrax TripleF AV plugin that we've written, we've made the uh, triple IF viewer that's displayed tied to the work type. So if you have an image work type, you could be displaying universal viewer. If you have a TV work type, you could be displaying a different player. And then the, the demos that you showed that had more going on, was that using universal viewer? Or is that something else that you were working Yeah, with? so this is universal viewer right. here. And then um, I believe that's the only triple IF viewer at the moment that supports AV content um, besides our prototype layer. Within 
the player context where you're showing video, I'm, I think that's a, a future we're definitely headed towards. I'm not sure if anything implements that yet. Um, again, the, the, the presentation 3.0 spec is not final yet, and so like, it's still taking, it'll take some time for the clients, the JavaScript clients, to catch up and, and really support uh, AP material. Thank you. And uh, we have some lovely pins. If oh. you would like a have one, yes, right next to Brian. And then uh, feel free to contact us if you have you know use cases you want to help. Um, let us know uh, which which you see AV looking like within Hyrax, and um, if you'd like to join us on any uh, sprints. Thank you.